Hello everybody and welcome back to Roger Williams Park Zoo. I am joined today with San. So, stoppable San. Hey guys. Uh, you were in the World of Ad one of the World of Adaptation episodes. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, I was in the uh, Tree Kangaroo episode, and I was in the Binturong episode. Yep, so there you go. So, um, you know, you're, you're a returning co-host, you know the drill here. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so today we are done with Faces of the Rainforest, and I have now moved on. We have now moved on to the giant anteater habitat. So, this is basically one of the last remnants of the now defunct tropical rainforest building, which is still standing, which is the weird part, like... Um, it, it, it had, it had a lot of animals and stuff that are, have now been moved into faces, but it had some cool stuff. Um, so this episode, I kind of, it's a, it's a bit of a hybrid. So I have partially the giant ant anteater habitat. And then obviously in order to have the giant anteater habitat, I also had to build the, um, giant building of tropical America in the background. At least, like, the shell of it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, obviously, I didn't do the interior. And I am maybe interested in doing the interior, but that might be a special or something. I, I think I want to still finish the series, but I am yeah. definitely interested in the possibility of doing the in interior of Tropical America, because I have a lot of fond memories over it um, relative to Faces. Um, it had its issues, but it's kind of nice. And again, like they didn't destroy the building. So it leads me to believe that at least to some extent the building wasn't in such a state of like disarray that like it's not functional anymore or else they wouldn't be using it to this day for the ant eaters. So yeah. I definitely think that like I don't know maybe maybe there is a, a day in the future where some form of tropical America opens up again as some new habitat. I I hope yeah. so. Um because it, it's one of those very old classic buildings that is basically a remnant from, like, the the, the age of classic zoos, you know? Like, it's a very yeah. traditional brick building. I've heard rumors, uh, again, my, my sources aren't the most credible. They're, like, my parents and stuff. But I guess this might have been an elephant house at one point. Way yeah, way back I, I did read about it being an elephant house. So, I guess way back in the day, like probably like in the early 1900s maybe even earlier um this i believe was home to one of the first alices so yeah um it, it, it would make the most logical sense that um that it did help hold the first alice yeah because because it's like this big brick building right which is uh which is like yeah i mean be if you're gonna invest in a brick building chances are it's got to be something big Exactly, yeah. So I, I do believe it was um, the original elephant house. Uh, I believe it was uh, Alice was an Asian elephant, and yeah, she was. Um, from what I can tell, the like, from what I remember, there used to be a little memorial back in when Tropical America was open and stuff, and um, I, you might still be able to see it on Street View, but there was, like, a little memorial for her over by the Ant Eaters, and then, I guess, since then, since they did construction and stuff, it seems to have been removed. Um, but I do vaguely remember that in my, like, in the recesses of my mind and stuff, so it does seem to indicate that it was there at one point. Um, yeah, which does again further, you know, give credence that we, this used to be an elephant house. But again, it it's been a tropical house for the longest time, and um, it's been the ant eater house since two thousand two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve was it? Two thousand twelve? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, or maybe it was two thousand ten. That that might that might make more sense. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like I remember it was around that time period. Like, it was somewhere between 2008 and 2012. I, I, I forgot when in particular, but it was definitely mm -hmm. somewhere in that, like, you know, area um, when we got anteaters. And I remember that was, like, one of the last, like, major animals that, like, really, like, the public really liked. Um, the talking did decently okay with, like, poles and stuff, but, like, people really love the anteater. I am glad we, um, we have kept them through faces and stuff, and... Mm -hmm. 
Because um, actually the plan, and I know I've talked about this a little bit with the Faces episodes, but the plan originally was we were supposed to get maimed wolves that are going to, like, um, that would have shared the habitat with the giant. Yeah, they would have cohabitated with the anteaters. Yeah. Um, now, unfortunately, that didn't work. Also, you can definitely see me struggling, so... <laughs> A um, little side note here, but the um, giant anteater habitat has this faux termite mound in the actual um, habitat, and it kind of acts as like a viewing way. They, it's, it hasn't been like usable for like you know the last few years just because of coronavirus and stuff. So like they cleverly block it off with a sign, but um, it's basically just it's, a, it's another viewing window for the anteaters. Um, mm -hmm. but like I struggled with it so much, but the, the biggest troll for me was I don't want to use, um, prop like scenery props or whatever for this build. So, cause I eventually want it on the workshop and I was using NDP's, uh, faux rock set recently and he has one piece that is the exact perfect shape for like this. But it, it, it was just staring me in the face, but I'm like, I can't use it, can't use it. And so I had to use everything I could to, like, try to get it, like, looking okay. And I, in the end, it looks fine. It's just so difficult to get a shape like that using only the faux trees um, or the faux branches, for that matter. But eventually, Yeah, unless your name is Haribo, it's very, very difficult to do. Yeah, exactly. If I built it, like, piece by piece using, like, really tiny pieces, I might have been able to. But, like, I, I didn't really have mm -hmm. the, the, like, patience for that sort of thing where it would have been, like, um, you know, way too specific. Because I was too busy detailing stuff like this, the little, uh, like, pathways and, like, you know, railings and stuff for the... The fencing because i wanted to focus a lot on detailing in this episode and so mm -hmm. obviously this is a very large area um so i tried to get as much detailing in as possible so i basically used a lot of little things i bounce around a lot um because uh, yeah. it's kind of an interesting habitat because it has a lot of foliage that isn't really anywhere else in the zoo um, I don't know if it's just because it's the specific kind of, like, bamboo or reeds or something that the zoo has, but it has, like, a lot of unique stuff. So, one technique that Leaf, I know Leaf has been in, like, the last four episodes, and, uh, but he gave me, um, a bit of advice on if I used, I think it's, like, one of the, like, Australian ferns or whatever, it could act as grass. So, like, little sharp grass. Um, like dead kind of grass a little bit. That the spiny mat rush, right? Or yeah. the priority grass? Yeah, it was one of one of those, I think. And yeah, it, it gets most um, the greenish ones, the spiny mat rush. Mm -hmm. So the, and uh, you you see what I just did there, where I added a log and stuff. That's another case of like some of the prop mods I have. I have little rocks and stuff, or little logs that I wanted to use, and I'm like, can't use them. I have to do it the old-fashioned way. So I had to like sink a entire tree into the ground just to get a little tiny log like that. But um, you know, it's one of those things. You know, it, it, it's always fun, like. Uh, jumping back into like how vanilla people have to play Planet Zoo and stuff once once I've been modding and stuff so much, but um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool. So I think at this point I I took a little bit of a break from the habitat. As you saw, I did I, I liked what I did a few times with some of the custom trees and stuff I did, where I used some of the saplings to make like tiny trees. Again, what we need in a future patch to Planet Zoo we need more New England foliage because just the trees that we have in game just don't cut it. They don't, they're not North American foliage. We have really tall, thin oak trees like everywhere. Um, they're not like thick logs or anything. They're just little tiny, thin trees that are really tall. Um, and then obviously like, you know, I can always mix in elm and spruce trees and pine trees and stuff because we have those. But like we just need more oak tree variants and stuff than yeah. we have. So I had to yeah, get Yeah, the, be the best I'm doing is just like the Brazil nut trees. Mm -hmm, exactly. The Brazil nut tree is like the default like tall tree that everyone has to use, even though it's not even remotely close to like the correct, you know, geography for like most zoos. Like it's ba obviously based off of jungles and stuff. But it's the mm -hmm. best we can get. Um, so this was interesting. So the only reason I know about this little top area is because of Google Earth. So had I not seen Google Earth, I wouldn't have even known that they had a little um, sunroof 
in the Faces building, or um, the Tropical America building, which kind of actually does make sense, because as I think back to it, like, it, it did have a sunroof, like, uh, pouring, yeah. like, light into the room. It would um, make sense if it was, like, a tropical rainforest. Like, you need light for plants to grow. Like, originally, I actually read a story about um, how when Brookfield Zoo opened up their tropical house, right, Tropic World, mm -hmm. the French architect didn't include skylights at all, and they tried uh, growing plants in there, and it was just an absolute disaster. Keepers would jokingly call it Tragic World. <laughs> yeah, like, um... Because that was kind of the thing, is like a lot of the foliage that was in Tropical America, I, it was fake, I will say that, but I do think we did have a couple of like um, smaller trees and stuff in the, or uh, like actual vines and stuff that grew in the center. Um, mm -hmm. which, which, speaking of vines, I can't wait to like show the end of today's episode because like that, that's that area that I work on at the end is like the full nostalgia for Tropical America, like in, in high gear. Um, yeah. Because what I'm working on right now, and this is where I was struggling, because um, the classic theme was a like, blessing for this um, build, because the classic theme is exactly what I needed. Um, but, like, it obviously doesn't have quite the right pieces and stuff for what I needed. So, like, the classic door looks very similar to the classic door that's in Planet Zoo, but not quite. So I had to kind of get a little bit creative with... Um, some of the other little detailing pieces and stuff to like try to get it right. It basically has like these kind of supports with like a, a big archway at the top. Very similar to the one that they have. And it also like sticks out of the building a little. It's really weird. Like, um, it's always interesting like how you might know what a building looks like, but until you like look at it like, like intensively, you would like miss little details like that and stuff. So in the case of like this, like there's a little, it pops out a little bit but not by much, so I had to, like, add that in to just to modify the building shape a little bit. And then, obviously, like, the matching up these little corner pieces that I could, like, get those to line up, that was, like, a little bit of a pain. Um, just because there's a lot of little stuff here that needed detailing, so uh, I added, obviously, uh, all of the different little vents and stuff, because, um, like, it's now a defunct building, but it has a lot of old like remnants of when it was functional as a big tropical house so it obviously had like a big heater and stuff and it had to be constantly the right temperature and stuff it was always muggy it's very similar to faces or pretty much any tropical house where it's always that kind of like misty muggy uh, like temperature um and it also had these kind of octagon windows so we don't have octagon pieces in game. Well, actually we do, because as you can see here, I have an octagon um, from the India set, but it's not flexicolor. <laughs> so I was like, great, so now I have to make it custom. So I had to use the primitive pieces to get an octagon. Ultimately it looked okay, but I do wish it had the like kind of sandstone texture that the India set has, but in the end, I think it worked out okay. Yeah. All I can say about the octagon is Jack Black would be proud. <laughs> So there we go. So that is basically that. I think this is m roughly where I called it a night, um, the first night. So I, I worked on it basically over the span of two, two consecutive nights. Um, actually, over here I, I forgot this. I added a little bit of like decrepit vines and stuff. Cause what's interesting is you to this day can look at the building on like when you go to the zoo. So if you go to the um, exit of face of the rainforest right before you go to the anteater, you can turn and still see this little chunk of area. Um, and you can see that like all the ivy and stuff that used to grow on the side of the building has just let like rot. They let it rot. They haven't like watered it or anything. So it's now just like a bunch of like really like dead vines and stuff like all over like the side of the wall and stuff and I'm you know not... if they really were oh god sorry oh i was like i'm not positive if the ivy is dead on the other side um and you see that later in the video that i made it basically like how i remember the um building looking but if i had to guess it's probably dead as well on the other side of the building mm -hmm. but yeah what were you saying sorry yeah i was saying like if the, if they really wanted to emulate like a rainforest environment for faces like why and, like, you see this modern, clean building, like, it almost looks like, um, uh, an expansion to, like, a children's hospital or something. You know what would be really cool? Like, if they somehow planted ivy all over, like, the building and such, and just let it grow similar to how they did with Tropical America. 
Yeah, like that would be cool because that's the only thing that I really am not a fan of with faces is the yeah like you said it's a very modern like building to where it just looks like a hospital or something or like just a big modern art piece and it loses the kind of like oh cool it's a nice tropical building or something it's just like for it being called like face of the rainforest you wouldn't tell it's a, a rainforest building at first it looks like a big greenhouse or something but not like oh yeah that's clearly a big south american jungle inside um, versus the old one, which just having the ivy growing on the, the side of the wall made it immediately recognizable as, oh yeah, this is a jungle house. Um, and I know the master plan, it's original concept for the, um, the original Faces of the Rainforest building was a lot more in line with what you would traditionally think of a, uh, jungle house. So it had thatch, uh, roof coverings and a lot more bamboo work and stuff. Ultimately, a lot of that, like as you can see here, the only remnants of kind of bamboo fencing are in the anteater habitat. And like once we get to next episode, which is going to be the flamingo episode, that's where the the full on um, we went modern instead of like themed really kicks into place where they made um, technically the flamingo interior building has thatch roofing. But the rest of it is just entirely modern. It is just a chain link fence, a chain link roof. Um, the pathway is gravel. Like there's just not a lot of theming that would indicate it's South America. I think they technically have a couple of little side fences that are bamboo, but past that, there's like not really. You don't get the the same vibe that the old building had. Um, even if it was a bit decrepit, I wish they kept some of the ideas that the original building had but um as you can see here now i'm basically back to uh the actual anteater habitat so i'm back to kind of theming it and what i knew i needed to do to get it to look right because it is a re really big area is i needed a lot of foliage um and i needed to make it like accurate or else it wasn't gonna look right I also uh, changed the color of the pool because originally I had it as this plaster white, which is the color that it was when it was first built. And then um, I looked at my modern images and I'm like, oh yeah, they painted it. They made it brown. So <laughs> I had to just change that and gave it like kind of like a, a murkier watercolor. But at this point, this is where I kick it into high gear where I'm like, what needs foliage? Where does it need it? Etc. Um, I, I tried to place rocks and stuff where I could the best I could. Um, and a lot of it ultimately came down to just spamming a lot of little little plants because it is mostly a grass field but I needed it to be somewhat detailed or else it just wasn't gonna look good um, I do have I did include the pacing trail so I will say a thing about our ant eaters at Roger Williams they pace a lot and they have paced so much that they have this this same circuit every single time where it they exit out of their door they come around to the front, do a little spin, go around, and then they go past this little area that I'm working on right now in the back uh, and hide in the bamboo from the people. Because they, I, I don't know if that, that's a common thing for anteaters in particular, but they do seem rather shy from the public. So the anteaters like to hide behind this big, big bamboo um, little bush that's on the side. Also, a little side note, I really love these little fake termite mounds I made. I think they came out really good looking and uh, that, they just used the um, little faux uh, tree branches. But yeah, basically this little patch that I'm working on with the bamboo back there, that is ultimately the majority of the time where the anteaters like to ha hang out. Um, they will occasionally um, come in here, but like come around, but for the most part, they like that or they have a little sprinkler um, on like hot summer days that they like to play in. So um, they really do like the water. So they like to splash in it. They rarely use their pool, weirdly enough. So they have a whole pool, but they like to use the sprinkler a lot more uh, than... Because it's like more, it's more dynamic and it's like moving water compared to uh, relatively still water. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're basically kind of wrapping up the habitat now. I'm just adding in their enrichment and stuff. So a fun thing that's about the anteater in particular, they always have a Panera bag, a Panera bread bag in there for enrichment, which they usually fill with either like different kinds of um, like avocados or something. They really love av avocados. Um, yeah. And then like different types of fruit and stuff. Cause like for most animals, like a 
a paper bag would be like you know the worst thing to give them but for anteaters it's i guess really good enrichment because they get to yeah. like, tear it up with their claws and um you know eat it eat stuff out of the inside because they can't choke on it or anything they're anteaters so they just yeah stick out their tongue and whatever um, when you were when we were first talking about it like you meant you said that it was a plastic bag which i thought wait why would you give an animal a plastic bag and now that you say that it's paper, I mean, the reason why, like, a lot of animals are given, like, paper-based enrichment is because, A, it's biodegradable, and B, like, of course, the animals, if they somehow ingest it, like, it's not going to be terrible for them, because what is paper but fiber, basically? Yeah, exactly. So, um, we are wrapping up this episode a little bit, and so what I needed to do is just kind of detail the rest of the building and stuff. Off camera, I think I'm going to do a little bit more detailing on the roof of Tropical America to add, like, the little, like, the air conditioning unit, the vents, the heaters, the piping, you know, stuff like that. But what I wanted to just kind of, uh, finish up today was basically this, which is the, uh, recreating the Tropical America outside, um which was really interesting so it used basically the entrance to the old tropical america building like we said was completely covered in ivy and i am going off of obviously i haven't been back here you know since it closed but i am going off of the google satellite images um which do show that while the other side of the building has lost all of its ivy like it's all dead and stuff according to google at least this side of the building in particular still to this day has ivy growing on it um so maybe it's just natural or something but um mm -hmm. I, I thought i would at least try to replicate it to the best of my ability um if the zoo is you know uh watching or something maybe they can correct me if if this is no longer the case because it could have died like i said i have no idea um, I, I have no idea of what the state of Tropical America is in right now on the inside. Um, I have a feeling it's kind of just being used as a storage shed. Like, it's just probably some of the faux rocks or trees are probably still there, but the majority of it is just kind of extra storage space for um, maybe special event stuff or signs or something. Stuff they don't That really honestly do. sounds kind of depressing, not gonna lie. Yeah, it is, but like, um, like I, that would be my best guess of what they would use it for, um, because, you know, what, what else would they need, like, any of that stuff for? But with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. You get to look at the beautiful giant anteaters in the game right now. And I want to thank you, Son, for being here today. So. Thanks for having me, Nick. Of course. So, uh, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like the series, you know, stay tuned every Wednesday. We're doing a weekly episode. So, next episode, we're doing the Flamingos. So, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.